What up? Tyler here, TarverCademy.com. So I want to hit you with uh, equations with problem solving. So we're going to work on solving equations, problem solving. So uh, let's look at our first thing. We want to define a variable in terms of another. And that sounds complicated, but it's not. It means that you're finding one variable based on the identification of something else. Okay? So let's look at uh, an example problem. And you see this, like on every ACT, there'll be a problem like this, every PSAT. Every time you take a test that involves a bunch of algebra or secondary math stuff, you will see a problem almost worded exactly like this. And it's so much easier to solve than people give it credit for. So here we go. Um, they'll say something about like a backyard being this or this or something. It'll evolve, but this is the basis of it. The width of a rectangle is two something, two feet less than the length. The perimeter is 16 feet. Now it might vary, they might say the length of a rectangle is something more than the width, or they might give you the area. The gist is the same, okay? I'm gonna show you how to work it, and you're gonna dominate, all right? So we've got a rectangle. First thing you should do anytime you have something where it's telling you that um, you have a shape, draw the shape, okay? They give you scratch paper for a reason. The width of a rectangle, so this is my length, I'm sorry, yeah, this is my length, this is my width, it doesn't matter, you can flip them, as long as these are my widths, these are my lengths. Um, the width of a rectangle is two feet less than the length. Okay, so the width of the rectangle is two feet less than what? The length. So those are our two, our two things that we have to base this problem. And we're going to utilize the perimeter because they gave it to us and we know we're going to have to use it. Alright, so the length we don't know. What's the length, everybody? Let's say it's L. I don't know it. L is my variable. L is the length. I don't know it. They gave us nothing to base that on. But they did give us something we can base on that. The width of a rectangle is two feet less than the length. I'm going to erase this. I know that's the width. So I know that I've got my length. What do I know about my width? It is two feet less. So it is two less than the length. I can work with this. If that's L minus 2, then this is L minus 2. If that's the length, that's the length. If you have one variable, you can solve a problem, ladies and gentlemen. The perimeter is 16 feet. What's the equation for perimeter? 2 times the length plus 2 times the width equals the perimeter. Plug in what you know to find what you don't know. Okay? I'm going to multiply. I could if I wanted. I could just do L plus L plus minus 2. I'm sorry. I can just add all these up because the perimeter is all the way around. I can just this plus this plus this plus this equals the perimeter. If you want, you can do that. I want to do it like this way because uh, I just want you to learn more. So um, the length is L, so I'm just going to keep that 2 times L plus the width is L minus 2. So 2 times L minus 2 equals, in my perimeter, plug in what you know. I know that that's 16 to find what I don't know, which is L. Now I'm going to simplify. I'm going to distribute that there. I'm just going to bring that down. Plus 2 times L is 2L. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Equals 16. I can simplify these. 2L plus 2L is 4L. Minus 4 equals 16. I'm going to get the 4 over there. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. It cancels out. I've got 4L equals 16 plus 4 is 20. Divide 4 on both sides. L equals 5. All right? Now you're probably not done. I would assume that on that test, it's going to ask you, tell me the width of this or find the, find the length and the width. It will never give the first thing you, you have. It will give you that as an answer. So I would bet money that five is one of your answers because you just got invested in this whole problem. You worked it out and you got five. You look up, five is B, circle B, move on. Got it wrong. Because most of the time, they're going to want you to plug what you found in to your original equations to find out what something else. It's the most, it's the most used trick in math standardized tests, okay? So my length is 5. I know this right here is 5. They're probably going to ask you for the width. So I would just plug in what I just found. L is 5 minus 2, 3. So my width is 3. And that's probably what they're going to ask for, but you should reread the last sentence of the question and see what they actually want. Money! What up? 
Tyler here with TarverAcademy.com, and I'm going to hit you with some math knowledge. All right, we're talking about um, solving equations, um, using like problem solving stuff where they give you like a word problem, you got to break it down, figure it out. We want to talk about consecutive integers, okay? Like I've said before, with math, they're not very creative. They're great with numbers, not creative. And so what they did was they said, well, what are we working with here? Integers. Okay, so like numbers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, integers. All right, well, what are we talking We're talking about stuff that's like in a row. So it's like consecutive, right? <gasps> Let's call them consecutive integers. Oh, yeah, great. Huh, high five. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> boo. <laughs> math. Grr. All right, I don't know why I made that. A face. Okay. Consecutive integers. It's talking about numbers that are back to back. They differ by one number. So like 49 to 50, uh, 71 to 72, 100 and 101, 3 and 4, 5 and 4, 5 and 6. Those are consecutive integers because they go back to back. So um, when I was growing up, the only time I'd ever heard consecutive was like uh, consecutive home runs in baseball. It meant somebody got up there, boom, home run, ha, score. Next person comes up. Boom! Oh, home run, back to back. Consecutive home runs. It means it's back to back. That's what consecutive means. Okay? So let's look at an equation. Um, let's say uh, three consecutive integers um, add up, or the sum of three consecutive integers is the fancy way to say it, to 147. What are they? A lot of people. A lot of people will just like guess and check. Like they'll start typing, if they're taking a test, they'll just type of stuff in their calculator. Um, I'm gonna show you the equation way to figure it out, but also tell you if you are gonna guess and check, say like worst case scenario, you forget everything I just taught you, which you shouldn't, because I'm gonna teach it as well as I can. Um, and remember everything I say. Did I ever mention that? I just remember everything I ever say. So whenever you're doing this, if you are gonna guess, think, okay, you've got three numbers. They're gonna add up to around 147, which is close to like 150. And they're gonna be back to back to back. Okay, if you've got a, around 150, split that into three chunks, because if numbers are off by like one, they're pretty close. So you're like 50, 50, 50, that's 150, right? So you know that your three numbers are gonna be close to 50, give or take probably five, that's my guess. All right, because you know they gotta add up to that, but they differ just a little bit. So I guess they're probably somewhere around like the 48, 49, 51, 52, 53 range. But I'm gonna show you how to work the problem legit style. So you can write it out, say you get an open response, you can write it out, look really smart, make your teacher look good, then your school look awesome, they're gonna celebrate, and you're gonna win a million dollars. That's how it works, I didn't make the rules. So this is how you do the equation. All right, so I know that I've got three numbers. One of them is a number, and then they're consecutive. So I know that I've also got another number that's just one more than that. And then I got another number that I know is one more than that. So it'd be like this number plus two, correct? So I've got my original number. I know I went up one, and then I went up two from there. So boom, boom, boom. They're in a row. I know they add up, add up to equal 147. All right, so now I just got to, oh, it looks so hard. No, it's not. Look, dude, just split it at the equal sign and combine like terms, okay? You don't do any opposites unless you go across the equal sign. We're not going to go there yet. We're going to chill over here for a minute. So we've got x, plus x, plus x. One, two, three, that's three x. I'm gonna mark them out so I don't count them twice. I kept the signs with them. Now I'm gonna do my regular numbers. One plus two is three. Now I'm gonna bring down everything over there. Now I'm gonna go across the equal sign. I'm gonna get rid of that one first because it's further away from the x, so minusing three. That cancels out. Three x equals one forty. Four, and then I'm going to divide that by 3, because 3 times x, the opposite is divide. So we've got x, it cancels out, and then that goes into a 4, and then 8. So x equals 48. And you're like, oh, I'm done, and that's going to be an answer. Well, don't do that, because they're probably going to want you to find all three consecutive numbers. So don't just put 1. That's crazy. But I know one of them is 48, correct? Now, I kind of marked over it, but I knew I had x, x plus 1, and x plus 2. Okay? I just found x, and then x plus 1. So 48 plus 1 is 49, and then 48 plus 2 is 50. And you can always try that out to make sure it's correct. Add them up. Um, that's 7, 1, 5, 10, 14, 147. 
pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't want to toot my own horn, but thank you, Chick-fil-A. Sponsored by Chick-fil-A Diet Lemonade. Delish. What up? Okay, Tyler here, and I want to talk to you about the most famous type of mask question people like to say is confusing. Okay, it's the, it's the legendary question like if a train leaves the station at this time and another train leaves this time and they're going this many miles per hour, what time will they meet up? And people are always like, that's an apple or a tree, I don't get it. Well, you're about to get it and you're about to know. So whenever people are like, who can even understand math? It's like all this stuff and you're gonna go, oh, I learned that already. It's from tarbacademy.com. All right, so the first thing you need to understand and it's not gonna play in, it's just something you need to know. It's called constant motion, okay? So with constant motion, it's your distance equals your rate times your time. Okay, so if your rate is um, 60 miles per hour and your time is two hours, if you're going 60 miles per hour, that means you're going to go 60 miles in one hour and you're going to do that for two hours, you're going to multiply them. So it'd be two times 60, so you go 120 miles. Okay? That's the basic concept of constant motion. Now, the question you'll get, this is the example question, and this is how to solve it. Train one leaves the station going 60 miles per hour and leaves at 2 p.m. Train two leaves the station going 96 miles per hour and leaves an hour later than the other train. I want to know when they're at the same distance. Let's say they're parallel and one leaves, and this one leaves, what time are they gonna meet up if the faster one leaves later, okay? I wanna know when they're gonna have the same distance, okay? I'm gonna be able to figure the distance out because I know that their distances are gonna be equal when they meet. I don't know how fast, I know how fast they're gonna go. I don't know how much time it's gonna take. And therefore, I don't really need the distance yet. I just need to know that their rate times their time is gonna be equal because the distances are equal. So I'm gonna set rate times time, if I have, this is train ones, and this is train twos, these are different, this is gonna be the same. So I can just set these two equal to each other. So I'm gonna do their rate times time, rate times time equal to each other. Train one's rate is 60 miles per hour, and let's say it leaves at times t. So rate times time equals the rate of train two, which is 96. And it's leaving an hour later, so it's kind of the tricky part. If it's leaving an hour later, it'll be the same amount of time the other one has, minus one hour. It has one less hour than the other one. So it'll be time minus one hour. Now, I've broken the barriers of word problems. I've got it down to where it's just solving the equation, so I'm gonna solve it, 60 times t, I can't really do, I can just drop the parentheses. Now this, I can distribute. 96t minus, and then one times 90, or negative one times 96 is negative 96. Now I get my t's together. I always like to get the smaller t over there. Plus you can't have like a negative distance, so it doesn't, I don't want to make it a negative here, but you could, whatever. So I'm gonna subtract 60t from both sides. Cancels out, makes it zero. 60t times minus 60t, zero. 96 minus 60 is 36t minus 96. I want to add 96 over here. So I'll add it over there and it cancels out. Add it over here, it becomes 96. That's 36t. Now I want to get t by itself, so I divide 36 on both sides. So that would be 1, it would go away, so it's t. And then that would go into it um, once, twice, and then you'd be left at 72, you'd be left at 24, so it's 24 over 36, which simplifies to two thirds. Two and two thirds times, so it'd be like two hours and 40 minutes. So after two hours and 40 minutes, they would be at the exact same spot. It would have finally caught up. Now let's say, like, if you're working a standardized test, like an ACT or something, this is gonna be an answer. However, it's probably gonna ask you in the original question, hey, find the distance that they travel. They're trying to trick you, okay? So what you do is you take that and you plug it into either one of your equations. So it'd be like 60 times two and two thirds, which I don't know what it is, so you're gonna type it in your calculator. 
and find it out, but that's going to be the amount of distance it goes. So it looks like it's going to go, if I had to guess, it'd be 120 plus uh, 40. So it'd be, um, I'm sorry, I, I totally got off track because I started thinking if I was doing it right. 120 plus 40 is 160. So it'd be 160 miles, probably. I don't know. That seems right. Uh, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, and I'll feel bad, but I'll still keep the video up. <laughs>Hey, it's me, Michael Jordan, Shoemaker. I want you to know that if you don't click that little circle there to subscribe, then uh, you won't ever find your true love. That's a fact. It's like an email letter, email chain letter. If you're not 45 years old, you will not get that joke. Not important. Wait, click that. Anyways, I'll wait.